Hey everybody, welcome to Hey We're Talking. It's Friday. Bob is still smoking that cigar. Man, he cannot get through it during a whole entire week. It's crazy. And uh, he's got a little beer stack going on. It looks like there's a there used to be this uh, like uh, I think it was like a dog on Hanna Barbera that would go <laughs> had this like little funny laugh. Did you guys get to see Hanna Barbera cartoons, or, or is that too far away from? Yeah, you were. Yeah. No, I'm not that much older. I can't. Oh, <laughs> oh son not of a... only and Derek Tant here, by the way. Oh, okay. Um, not only did I watch Hanna Barbera cartoons when I was uh, like a toddler living in Houston, Texas. We had a, a little amusement park called Hanna Barbera Land that we would go to. It was eventually torn down and turned into a, a water park, but that was a memory. Oh. That happened. There you go. Okay, listen, I, I'm going to find the guy. Barbera, but Muttley! That's who it was. Hold on, let me get this picture. Yep, Muttley. Muttley laugh mix. I'm going to put that up. So anyway, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Bob. Oh, I wasn't saying anything. I was I was pouring the rest of my beer. Oh, okay. I knew Bob would find more beer. That guy. <laughs> this guy. So anyway, uh, that's Bob. He's pouring beer and drinking beer. But today, we're going to talk about uh, vacation memories uh, that we have. And uh, we were already talking in the break, and I was like holding back this story. So I'm going to get it out right in the beginning. Uh, Derek talked about going to Cedar Point uh, on Wednesday. We lived about, I would say we were about three hours in the Detroit area from uh, Sandusky, Ohio is where Cedar Point is. And we would go, I would somehow go with either like friends, family, uh, church group, school group, whatever. We would always go to Cedar Point, at least it seemed like once a year, uh, if not more. And uh, we talked about water parks. Well, I'm going to just throw this water park story out there. Went to Cedar Point as an adult uh, with some friends. We camped, which was, man, did you see that smoke ring? Man, he's excited about that. Uh it went perfectly, like, over I, my glass. I know. It looked awesome. Yeah. I wish I would have stopped and really admired it. So I, I'll rewind it and watch it later. So anyway, uh, went to Cedar Point as an adult. We camped out, and it was... Camping out there was, a, was weird, okay? That's a whole other story. But we went to this water park. And I'm, I'm a large man, okay? Water parks are not usually the friends of fat people. But I went to this water park against my better judgment. They have this massive water slide thing that you go on and it and you're in this like round tube with not just yourself, multiple people can go in it. Well, we happened to go uh, in one because it was kind of cold that day and a little rainy, but we still went anyway. This guy that I went with, Dennis, and his daughter, Kayla, we went got in this thing and they're both like super normal healthy people i'm this large guy they're like so you sit on the opposite side of them and i was like okay they push us down this thing and of course my humongo body goes so i'm backwards because the heaviest thing's gonna go down the slide first now the slide it's we're high up okay and it's got really big rims and stuff like that and we pick up some speed. I mean, I'm making us haul. My gravity is kicking in. And we are flying down this thing. If Dennis was listening to this, he would be laughing so hard. Because their faces, the terrified look on their faces. Because we were going so fast <laughs> down this thing. So what ended up happening is you, you're, it twists and turns and does all this stuff. I started going up on the edges mm -hmm. of this thing. My body, I'm going out of this thing okay and we're high up my butt is there's like a little ledge and my butt is kind of i can feel it going over the ledge and i'm just thinking i'm gonna die i'm gonna fly out of this thing and die and cheryl wasn't there so she she's gonna get a call yeah your husband your fat ass husband went up over the edge and flew out of the water park and died you know but that, dude, that's happened dude i know it was terrifying and i thought to myself how did somebody not think uh should we have a weight limit on this thing i mean because we were going so fast we got to the bottom 
and you splash into this big thing of water. We come up out of the water and Dennis was like, dude, we almost died. And I was like, you're telling me I was going out of the thing, dude. Yeah, and he was like, fine. I would have went launching off the side. And he was laughing his butt off and his daughter was white as a ghost. She was terrified. Dennis is such a menace, man. <laughs> So that's one of my memories of Cedar Point. That wasn't from when I was a kid, but that is burned into my brain. That was terrifying. Okay, so I wanted to get that story out quickly. I do have a water park anecdote. <laughs> Let's hear yours. Well, I was a teenager. Uh, my family and I, we went uh, down to six uh, to San Antonio. We visited Six Flags, Fiesta, Texas, and Schlitterbahn which is a German themed water park in New you Braunfels. You can't say that on, on, on the air. No curse. No Schlitter. Schlitterbahn. Anyway, it's a, it's a cool park. They actually incorporate uh, a local river into the, the park system. So you can kind of cool. float down the river in the park. It's, it's, it's pretty that cool. Sounds sanitary. Well, <laughs> it's a river. All the, all the fish in the uh, the river died from chlorine from the water park. All right, Derek, tell your story. We're just picking away on you today. This is not good. Go ahead. Killing the momentum here. I know. So it already takes them long enough to tell a story, and then we keep that, cutting it on them. True. So my little brother Brandon, we one day we we were at I think it was Schlitterbahn, and he got bit on the ear by a mosquito, and. His ear literally ballooned up in like two or three times its normal size. Oh, it was, gosh. It was incredibly huge. And we used that to our advantage. Like we skipped past the main line. We're like, our, you know, my brother is handicapped. Or, you know, <laughs> and he had the huge <laughs> ear. We, we were able to like skip through and uh, take advantage and go to the front of the line. It was a great. So day. it wasn't bothering him that much then. No, he wasn't like going into anaphylactic. anaphylactic shock. Yeah. I think if I knew now, if I knew now, then what I know now, I probably would have been more alarmed, but we were just like, <laughs> how can we use this horrible disfigurement, disfigurement to our advantage? Yeah, but it was, I mean, it was, it was gnarly, man. <laughs> really. <laughs> it was. Woo. <laughs> I Every just, time I, I think about go ahead, Bob. While gnarly, it, it's a good. That's a good word, I man. I've heard that in a while. I like it. Every time I think about the stuff that, uh, and I'm sure you guys have the same thing that that we did as kids, and like nobody really cared, like the stuff that would happen to us, how we'd get hurt and stuff like that. And you look today, if a kid like skins his knee, you know, everybody's like, oh, my God, where are the protections for these children? It's just like sometimes you just go, how did we survive? Oh, yeah. Like, we, should, we have nine lives like cats. Yeah. I should have died a lot. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's making me laugh because I'm thinking about all the people on YouTube videos who they, they label them so people will click on them. I almost died. Right. That's like the big thing everybody puts on their videos. I ran into parked cars on my bike and rammed my head off the hood. I mean, we we did crazy stuff oh, as man, kids. We, I see, see, as a kid, as a teenager, I used to do a lot of bicycle stuff. So I'd race bicycles, and uh, we would just get become crazy and and build ramps out of dirt. Oh yeah, and like we. <laughs> there was just one time, me and uh, me and this guy Travis that we were friends for so long. Um, we built a ramp. Um, to, to jump a pit that we dug and we, in the pit, we threw like a whole bunch of rose bushes and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You're evil Cleveland in that thing. Yeah. We'd go and jump this thing on a bicycle and try to make it through. I you said, you probably didn't make it. I said, try to make it through. Exactly. <laughs> we did eventually, but there was a couple times, man, where we were just like, I mean, we, we'd smash right into that, that pit and just, you know, rose bushes and all over us and. But that's, you know, that's part we of it. We were doing that. jackass before jackass was cool. Oh, yeah. You know it. We just didn't have video cameras because they were exactly. huge, number one. Yeah. And they were very expensive back then. That reminds me of when I was like eight or nine. I was riding home from school on my bicycle. And we had like a skateboarder guy on our street. And he had built like a, a huge skateboard ramp that it was like three or four feet tall that he would put on the sidewalk 
that he would do his skateboard ramp tricks off of. Well, I was riding home from school one day. I was on my bike, riding on the sidewalk, and I was talking to a girl on the oh, street. That's how it always happens. And I, all of a sudden, I was just talking. I, she didn't warn me. She should have said something. Maybe she was just transfixed on my eyes, too. Yeah, that's but, what it was. But I, all of a sudden, I flew up this ramp and off busted my face <laughs> in it was, it was a bad day oh my gosh i, I was think... at somebody's house in our neighborhood because a bunch of the neighbors in our neighborhood had in-ground pools i was at their house one day they were just a little ways down the street but it, you know we used to walk everywhere or ride our bikes everywhere and all this stuff there was no play dates you just went to somebody's house so i went to this person's house and they had a slide on their pool Ooh. And so we were goofing off and acting like weirdos and stuff. And we were trying different things on this slide. And so I went down backwards and like was doing, you know, being a goofball. And I went off the side of the slide and, and bashed my head onto the cement before I got to the pool. And there were parents there. And uh, I was just like, oh, oh, like blood coming out of the back of my head. And they were like, they go, oh, you better go home. So I walked home with a gushing thing on the back of my head. That's how stupid it was when I grew up. People, didn't, they didn't even like, it was no big deal. Go home. Make sure your mom will check that out. Make sure you're okay. Well, I mean, that's how it used to be with fights. You know, the, you find out your kid's fighting with another kid. The two dads got together and said, oh, these boys are fighting. I don't know why. Yeah. Let's have a, uh, let's have a Marlboro and a and uh, Milwaukee's best, and let these kids duke it out. I mean, that's how it used to be. Uh, yeah, well, well, fights back in our day were more like, you know, they ended without someone standing on you and kicking you in the face while you're on the ground. That's the true, difference. True. Milwaukee's and that took, a, that took a morbid turn right so, there. So the big thing that we did when we were kids is we went camping. You know, it started uh, Memorial Day weekend all the way through Labor Day weekend. So it would be... I don't know, once a month, sometimes every other weekend, it would be very often that we would go camping. And that I was kind of that. Um, and I love to camp now, uh, but unfortunately, you know, we can't necessarily just get away like, like you know, my parents were able to uh, when we were kids. But um, that, that's pretty much the biggest thing that we did. I think we went to like Indiana Beach a couple times, which is just like a water park and a music mm -hmm. place. Um, but I, I, the biggest thing that we we did all the time were we'd go camping. I mean, that's and my parents, you know, they we'd go camping with other families. So the kids would kind of go off and do their thing and the adults would have their time. And um, but that was, you know, that that made us kids grow up a lot. I remember like sneaking up into this little cabin with this girl and making out with her. I was like, what years old? Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's and then yeah. every year. Every year I'd come back and she'd be there again. And you guys would make out? Yeah. And her family nice. did the same thing. That's so cool. it's just one of those, one of those memories. She uh, was from Canada. I, I, she wasn't from Canada. I don't know I where know, she I'm was just from. kidding. That's what people do when they didn't really have a girlfriend. They'd pretend they had a girlfriend from Canada. Uh, my dad was a camper. And then I think once he, once my mom when they were married and stuff that he didn't go camping. He went on this really huge camping trip with my uncle where they dropped him off. Like they helicopter him in with a canoe. That's what I want to do. And they drop him off and they like just camped their way down this river to get back to humanity. Totally primitive. Um, yeah. I, I want to do that. Uh, I'm actually setting there up were bears and stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, you could, my grandfather told me a story about, how he and some friends did that up in uh, northern Minnesota, close to the, the Canadian border. That's where I think he was. That's literally what they did. They got flown in, dropped off, and they said, okay, well, you have a week to get back to this point. Yep. You've got everything you need in your backpack. <laughs> yep, but exactly. Here's, here's a, an emergency satellite phone. It's only oh. for absolute emergencies. I don't think they had that. Well, that's what they do now. I don't know if they yeah. did that then. This sounds a lot like the plot to Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And I'm, I'm one of those guys. I would love to do that. Uh, I'm actually planning a primitive camping trip. It'll be local with, with just a friend of mine. Um, just, you know, no lighters, no nothing. We got to go out there and do it all ourselves. Wow. Uh, no, no food. You know, let's go fishing and, and go do that. And It'll be like Derek and uh, Naked Cartwheel King stuck on a yeah, cliff pretty much. in the middle of Arkansas. Yeah, I, I plan on doing that at some point. Yeah. So... <laughs> We, I I would like to do that too, but let's be real. I'm I'm too accustomed to a posh lifestyle. Uh, yeah, I I had things that I would I would like to share, but I'm looking at the clock and I'm realizing it's time to kind of wrap this one up. But I mean, why don't you share one of them? Who cares? It's you we, know what? Here, how we went to if you if you guys listening right now are done, you you just got to work, or you just got home from work. You can stop now. This last okay. story is just for Scott. And okay, it's just for me. Him. I got to tell the story of almost flying out of the water slide, though. So I'm, I'm sure you got something else. I, I got stories for it, days. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say we used to go to Traverse City, Michigan all the time. My dad would pack us in the is car. That like Gaylord? No, Gaylord's on the other side of Michigan. Oh, okay. Figured so you- anyway, well, Gaylord's kind of in the middle. And Traverse City is in the the northwest. Anyway... Uh, we, my dad would, we'd all pack into the car and we'd leave really early. And my dad was like, always made a big deal about making sure nobody knew we were leaving for vacation. <laughs> we would leave in the middle of the night. Like, I'm I'm not kidding. Like we'd get up at like four thirty. Well, he would go to work at like four thirty in the morning all the time. So we'd get up like he would normally get up. We'd all be like, Oh gosh. So I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Your dad lied to you guys. He, he didn't want to make sure that nobody saw you leave. He just didn't want you guys to be awake being loud all freaking day. So I didn't sleep. He left at like 430 in the morning because he knew it was early and you no. guys would sleep for like the first four to five hours of his drive no. and it no. would be just quiet. No, you, you underestimate the paranoia of my father. So anyway, um, we'd pack into that car and he would say, we'd say, where are we going? And he'd say, I don't know yet. We'll know when we get there. And no matter what happened, we'd end up in Traverse City every freaking summer. But Traverse City is beautiful. If you get a chance to go there, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a, it's a peninsula in the northwest part of uh, Michigan. It's beautiful. It's, it's on Grand Traverse Bay. It's uh-huh. not in the UP, but it's no. just before the Mackinac Bridge and everything, right? It's somewhat, yeah. Okay. You're close, but not that close. I'm, I, I can get into further details because I know Michigan pretty well, but I'm just trying to give an idea for our listeners. It's, We're not from the Midwest. It's right there. Yeah, right there. I love so the anyway, peninsula, guys. That's great. It, it's beautiful. You would love it. All right. Any which way, Traverse City, that's my little uh, commercial for Traverse City. We will talk to you guys next week. We're actually going to talk a little bit about uh, jobs in a fun way. Don't don't get discouraged if you're like, oh man, I don't want to talk about jobs. I hate my job. Give me a teaser of Monday though. Oh gosh, I don't know exactly which thing we're talking okay. about on so, Monday. So on Monday we're talking. It's talk- gonna be it's gonna be us. Yeah, that, that's true. So Monday is the best way you've quit a job. Yes. So and- that one will be fun. It's almost like we should have done that on Friday though. Well, yeah, I don't know, but. Maybe we'll mix it up a little bit, but that will be one of the topics. And I've yes. got I've got a pretty dang good story. I mean, I do it's too. Like, it's kind of like a like a BA story, you know? Like, really, you did that? But it's I like, take great pride in the way I quit one of my jobs. It was yes. fantastic. Same here. I was just kind of like, you know what? Because I walk, every, all the employees were just like, Did you just do that? Yes, I was gone. And I, yes. it, it was it was pretty sweet. I've I bet you they're still talking about it to this day. The way I quit one of my jobs. All right, so we're going to talk about jobs next week and just different jobs that we've had and things like that, and yeah, it'll be fun. All right, guys, thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Have a great weekend, and we will talk with you soon. 